Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Bat Grisham, and as you are probably well aware, CES 2013 is now officially over. Now, at the beginning of CES 2013, people were thinking that the piston was the confirmed Steam box, which was going to be made by Valve. But we now know that this is not the case. The piston is not the official Valve Steam box. So today I'm going to show you how to make a PC equivalent for your living room or TV in your bedroom for as cheap as I could possibly do it. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, the PC equivalent of the Steam Box should be able to run most games at 1080p for your TV in your living room or in your bedroom. Now, these are my estimated guesses, so if you want to change things around, you feel free to do so. And if you don't know how to build a PC, you can do so by looking at these videos, which are from Tech Syndicate and Newegg. They show you a great way to build a PC for first-time builders, and this is what got me into building PCs. Now, as I'm telling you what to use in your living room Steam box, I'm going to be using two builds. One will be an Intel-based build, and then the other one will be an AMD-based build. Now, they both cost around five to six hundred dollars. Intel can be five hundred dollars. AMD is around six hundred dollars. Now, this is not including a keyboard, mouse, or monitor. But if you're using it in your living room or bedroom, you're probably going to be using your TV. But if you want to use a monitor, that's fine. And you can find a keyboard and a cheap mouse anywhere. Now I would also like to point out that this does also not include an operating system. You could use Linux or you can use Windows. I personally recommend Windows because you have a higher choice of Steam games, but if you want to use Linux, that's fine if you don't want to pay for Windows. Windows is roughly about $100. So without further ado, let's get started with the AMD base build. Now for the case, I chose the NZXT Gamma Classic. You can get this for about $35 on Amazon or Newegg. And some of its features are that it's cheap, but it's made of metal so it has great durability. It's got a cool design which has plenty of airflow, and it looks great whenever you look at it. I also own this case, which makes me a little bit biased toward it, but it's still it's small enough to fit in your living room without it causing too much notice, and it's a great PC case for any gamer. For the CPU, I chose the AMD Phenom 2 965 Black Edition. You can get this for about $85 to $100. It's a great value, and it's 3.4 GHz. It's easily overclocked, but it has a great no overclocking. It's got four cores, which is great for editing and for gaming. Now, people are saying that this CPU is getting old, but I do love it, and I'm going to use it for the system. The graphics card is where I put the most money. I chose the Gigabyte AMD Radeon HD 7870, which is 2GB. You, it's on sale right now for about $250. Now, its features are it can play just about any game at 1080p. Some games can even go up to 1920p, but it's extremely quiet, and it has one of the best graphics cards available. It's really quiet, it's got three fans, it won't be too hot, and it's definitely one of the best graphics cards you can get. And it's really cheap right now, so I recommend you buy it. If you don't want to spend that much, you can lower the price, get a 7770, but this is one of the best you can get, so I recommend you buy it. For the hard drive, I just chose a 7200 RPM Seagate Barracuda, which has 500 gigabytes. It's about 60 bucks. It's 500 gigabytes. It's big enough for your games, movies, or pictures. It's quiet, reliable, but if you have extra money, I recommend you just get a terabyte hard drive. But to keep costs low, I just gave you a 500 gigabyte hard drive. But if you really want to, I'd pay a little bit extra just for the bigger space. But this is what you should get if you're just starting out, 500 gigabytes. The RAM I chose is a Samsung DDR3 1600 MHz 4GB RAM stick. It's about 20 25 bucks online. It's 1600 MHz, which is great for any PC. It's easily upgradable, and it has enough for gaming, even though 8GB is recommended because I use 8GB. And 8GB is better, but 4GB is good for anything you really want to do. But the extra stick of RAM can really make a difference. The motherboard I chose is the ASRock 960GM slash U3S3FX. You can get this for about 55 bucks, but it's only on Newegg. I can't find it on Amazon for some reason. It may be out of stock, but I don't know. Its features are, it's got enough slots for whatever you need. It's cheap, yet it's good for gaming, and it's durable, so it's pretty decent. It's also got a PCI Express slot, which is great for me because I enjoy PCI Express slots because it's good for old computers that accessories you have lying around the house or something. So this is my mon motherboard. For the power supply, I chose the Corsair Builder CX 500 Watt 80 Plus. Now the 80 Plus is important because you don't want to skimp out on your power supply. Its features are it's cheap yet well made. It's 80 Plus, which is great for energy efficiency. It's a respected brand with enough voltage for our system. If you want to go higher in voltage, that's fine. But I recommend you get an 80 Plus if you want to do higher voltage. I wouldn't do lower than a 500 because 
the CPU does like to drain a little bit of power and also does the graphics card in your system. The light on 24 disk drive is what I chose for the optical drive. Now the optical drive is sort of kind of something that you don't really need. It's kind of like an accessory. If you have Windows on a flash drive, I recommend you just use a flash drive and not get an optical drive. I mean, you really don't use optical drives if you want to use Steam, but if you really want an optical drive for burning CDs or burning movies or anything you really want to do with a CD or Blu-ray, uh, just get something cheap. It's cheap and useful. It's got a DVD burner and player as well as CDs, and once again, it's also cheap, so get whatever you want. It's an optical drive. Well, there you go, guys. That was my AMD-based build of a PC Steam box. Now, without an operating system, monitor, mouse, or keyboard, this system should cost you about $600. Now, my Intel-based system should be out tomorrow. I will have an annotation, which will bring you to the video once it's up tomorrow. So, it should probably be there by the time you're seeing this. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. And if you want to leave me a question, put it in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'm not too great with sign-offs, so see you in the next video, guys. It should be up by tomorrow.